Hello, Play the Game family. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to lonewolfpaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. This episode is brought to you by the one and only G2 Paintball. If you are in Arizona or on the West Coast and soon to be nationally, be on the lookout for G2 training dates and be sure to sign up. They are a paintball athletics company designed to help you become the best paintball athlete imaginable by running you through all of the different moves and techniques that you need to know and you're going to be implementing on the paintball field. So that way when you get into the situations, the muscle memory is dialed in. You are also going to learn skills. You're going to learn tactics and of course the agility which is training to maximize your performance on and off the field this stuff is used by myself and Marcelo and we're pushing paintball players to become pro or just dominate in your division don't make excuses out there physical fitness is at an all-time high in paintball and you cannot win paintball tournaments unless you are ready to go physically on Sunday when you're dead tired and you're ready to hold up that trophy with your friends and family so you got to be prepared and G2 will help you do that head on over to g2paintball.com also check out their Instagram at g2paintball and give our man Victor Gamboa at Gamboa Limited, that's his Instagram, a follow and support him as well. It's owned and operated by Victor and Rusty and they're doing tremendous things in the sport. We absolutely love G2 and we cannot wait for you to get involved. So have some fun with G2 Paintball. Today's episode of PTG is brought to you by Transfuse, the amazing premium rapid hydration multiplier and immunity fortifying formula that is scientifically designed to replenish you at the cellular level and they use all natural ingredients in their products. It is packed full of zinc, vitamin B6, vitamin C, sodium, potassium, and choline. And when you take this product, you are gonna feel the difference on and off the field. I know that playing paintball with Transfuse has been a game changer, and it will be for you as well. If you head over to translabs.com, that's T-R-A-N-Z-L-A-B-S.com, and use code PLAYTHEGAME, you will get 10% off. And if you subscribe to a monthly delivery service, you get an additional 10% off. So you can take advantage of a total of 20% off on these amazing products. Also, head over to their Instagram, at transfuse.official, and check them out. And be on the lookout for their new flavors and brain booster nootropics that are coming soon. We absolutely love Transfuse from top to bottom, one of the best companies in the world with the greatest people running it. So head on over and become a part of their community and check them out. What's going on, PTG fam? Thank you guys so much for tuning into the show. This episode, we have none other than Miko Hutinin, formerly of the Russian Legion and Los Angeles Ironman, where he won back-to-back -back world titles. We were actually teammates. Miko is the man. He has worked with all of the top companies. He made his way all the way up to vice president of Dye Precision, now works for Push Paintball, and has some really cool projects he is working on. So without further ado, we're going to hop in the show with Miko. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. Came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a Miko Hutinen, my man, former LA Ironman phenom player, and uh, also played for the Russian Legion for a little bit. Retired, just living the best life now, uh, behind the scenes. What's going on, brother? What's up, guys? Glad Not to much. be here. Dude, Glad great to, to have you. 
Oh yeah, I'm super stoked to be talking with you guys. So yeah, nothing, much, nothing much here. So keeping myself busy, you know, living the life. Yeah. There we go. Back in very involved with the paintball again, you know, which is which mm-hmm. is fun and it's good. Dude, so, paintball I'll- missed you. Seriously, man, it's awesome to have you back and and some of the projects that we were talking about that you you uh, have been working on, man. They sound really exciting. Yeah, yeah, no, I I never li- really left. I was gone for like a couple of years, but I, you know. I've been around, but people necessarily haven't seen me so much, mm-hmm. but, um, um, it's been, it's been, uh, interesting, let's say last, last 10 years, you know, here and kind of seeing where everything is going, you know, and then now I'm back with like with no time, you know, just doing a lot of paintball stuff. Love that. Yeah. Absolutely. Love that. Where, uh, where are you reporting from? Where are the listeners? Listening I am from? in, uh, Encinitas in San Diego, like North San Diego, like right on the beach. Yeah. This right is, next uh, to skinny Kevin over there. Yeah, the skinny is actually he like skinny was my old roommate, like not a long time ago, and he actually ended up moving like he's like a mile down the road. Nice. nice. So, so yeah, it's exciting. Everybody's uh, everybody's moving to North County. You live I, up here too, right? Yeah, I, I have yeah, I do. I do. I'm a little more inland, but I live I could take back streets all the way to to your guys' area. Yeah, you kinda like you kinda like Arizona distance yeah, Arizona. from the beach, you know. No, the desert, I'm still west people, I'm hey, you know? I'm west of the fifteen. <laughs> That's true. I'm west That's of the 15. True. So yeah, we're yeah. still good. Anything <laughs> east of the 15, it's basically Arizona. That's that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's I have a is. feeling you and skinny Kevin together is a, a that's trouble. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe, maybe back in the day. It's not real yeah. old. Uh-huh. Back in the day. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what's good? What's you guys are heading to cop soon here? Yes, sir. Perfect. I'll mm-hmm. I'll see you guys there. Yeah, we can't wait, man. Can't wait to get out there and see everybody. We actually have a goat squad that's going to be out there at World Cup that's from PTG, and uh, we can't wait to see all of them out there as well. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, for some reason, I keep forgetting that you don't play in Dynasty anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like no, it's... Houston Heat. I know, I know. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it doesn't and, feel uh, right, right, Miko? Well, it well it's, like, right. it's just like you're so used to Tyler being with the Dynasty jersey, so it's like, you know, mm-hmm. You know, it is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. So, of course. you know, yep. I, I bounced a couple of teams myself. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. you did. Yeah, and we'll, we'll definitely get into that in a little bit. Your career is like really interesting, especially with uh, uh, the different teams that you played on and the legendary status of those teams at that time. You know, uh, definitely something to get into. But what are you going to World Cup for? Um, I'm going to be going there with the push paintball. So, I'm actually driving from San Diego to uh, uh, Orlando here leaving on friday so dude road know, trip oh yeah that's i'm i'm, I'm bringing my dog and like i want to like stop seeing a couple of friends and like what's gonna stay in uh uh well i will be staying a couple of days in florida go fishing and in, enjoy you know but um it'll be interesting it'll be fun i've, I've done it a couple of times before it's not that bad all right so talk to me about the road trip what what's gonna go down it's got to be like five days right yeah, so um, I'm driving with uh, with Brian Benini, so he's, he's nice. driving with me. So we're gonna leave here, and uh, probably gonna. Uh, my goal is to stop in Austin. I I want to go train uh, some jiu jitsu with my uh, with my buddies. So nice. I've been I've been training Brazilian jiu jitsu for a long time, and uh, a lot of the guys moved last year to Austin, and it's uh, like it's like Victor Hugo, Sanjir Ribeiro, like these guys are like top of the top of the top, you know? Yeah. So I, I hit them up. So I, I'm trying to go train with them for like day. Then uh, probably going to play golf with Brian. Nice. A couple, couple, couple times and then just get to Orlando, you know, and then yeah. Orlando set up push. And then I'm, I'm during the event. I'll work with the go sports. So I'll be, I'll be there with you go. guys. So I, I just recently, uh, um, I've been working with the Coast Sports like last couple of years, actually. Like, and I, the first event was right before the pandemic in uh, uh, pandemic yeah. started in uh, Vegas. And I've, I, I've done their social media and just helping Darren, Darren Cecina. He's the mastermind behind the whole production. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we go way back. We worked together at Die a long time. And uh, now kind of like taking more responsibility and uh, helping Darren to be more structured into the show. So you know, he's, he's like, he's literally been doing most of stuff by himself a, a lot. You know, there's a couple other guys, um, but uh, on the, on the back end, you know, people see Maddie and everybody else, but Darren is the guy who's grinding af- behind the scenes and, you know, working long mm-hmm. days and, and, mm-hmm. and that show is itself. It's like, I kind of want to talk about it because I don't think, you know, 
sometimes I, I don't think people appreciate how good they have, you know? Oh my um, God. Yeah. So mm -hmm. where, where we think that um, if you want to go into history a little bit, a little bit about the go sports is uh, yeah. uh, you know, Patrick Spore, the guy who directed Post with Brian Benini and uh, Sunday Drivers and, uh, you know, so on, all the Monkey with the Gun games. He was kind of the pioneer with the webcasting. And uh, uh, it at the time, there was all these TV contracts, you know, like you guys were around, but we were promised a ton of money and like, you know, we're going to be huge in ESPN and all these different platforms. Unfortunately, there was a lot of, you know, egos at the, around at the time, you know, and people kind of got greedy with some of the personal benefits. Un unfortunate for players for us, you know, because we kind of wanted to make it and make it money. And webcast probably was the right direction right since the beginning for paintball. Because there's a lot of similarities for paintball, uh, what happened to surfing. So surfing, yeah. um, I don't know how familiar with you guys have the surfing webcast, but what happened in surfing was that nobody wanted to carry surfing in TV because you could not predict when there's waves. You mm -hmm. could not predict how long the events would run. Um, and so it was really hard to make like live broadcast or making a show, whatever. Um, so surfing went, they, they basically said like, you know what, fuck it. Like, let's, uh, let's go, you know, let's do this uh, uh, show with, with our own production crew and like get this thing going. And with the internet being getting better and better, that's what happened. And now the, the surf webcast is huge. It's, it's massive. You know, it's a, it's a multi-million yeah. dollar yeah. production. Uh, it's now it's been streamed over the TV, like all over the world, but it, it's theirs, you know, and, and paintball kind of started with the same path. You know, there is a, and Dai was a big pioneer supporting mm -hmm. the, the webcast in the beginning. Uh, and Pat basically created the whole platform from, from the, from the scratch, you know, he, he studied how to get, you know, get this massive product because produ producing paintball live is extremely difficult. Yeah. So, and that's, that's, people don't realize that even right now, the show you are getting with the Go Sports, it's, it's really, really good amount compared to money they're spending on producing it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so anyway, so there's been a lot of different stepping stones and uh, Darren was the second guy after Patrick who was kind of like doing us, doing the stuff and um, he's still doing it, you know? So he's kind of, he's very experienced and knows how to do it. So he asked me if I want to be, you know, if you, if I, if I want to help him on, uh, on the show. And I was like, yeah, that, because I've, I've, I've been working with the media production and cameras and like all that stuff since I was a kid. Um, no way. That's yeah, awesome. So that's been kind how of how like did my, you, how did you get into that? I don't know. It's just something I've been interested in all my life, you know, and yeah. And even a dive, like Marcel probably remembers, you know, we were doing a lot of cool stuff back in the days. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, you made one of the coolest uh, Iron Man commercials for me back in the day when I came oh, back yeah, the, the second one, time. Yeah, yeah, the one uh, it's like a white background and you were talking to voiceover. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, no, that that's why. I, like again, some of the stuff that uh, that I that you've told me about you getting back involved on this level, I'm really excited. I think it's really good for the sport. Yeah. So, anyways, the co-sport, I'm I'm kind of taking the role of controlling the advertisement and like trying to get people back into supporting the webcast so mm -hmm. we can grow it and make it better you know mm -hmm. that there we can it's because i feel like people have kind of forgotten they think like now because you have to pay for the stream and stuff they're making money and not providing you all these things but it's it's not like that like they're barely making it happen so mm -hmm. uh i hope that we can bring industry um kind of excited about it again and like support the webcast and support the show and make it grow so uh, it's, it, and that's going to be better for everybody. It's going to be better for brands. It's going to be better for players. It's going to be better for the league. Um, so helping Darren with all that stuff. And that's, that's what I'm kind of doing during the event. And other than that, I'm there with the Bush guys. So I, I also work at Bush Paintball. Um, and uh, we're going to have boot at the World Cup. That's the awesome. first time we're actually doing the boot since the COVID started. So um, yeah. anyways, people stop by, check out. There's going to be some new cool, cool colors and gear so yeah absolutely we can't wait to see all the vendors um yeah. and everybody stop by say hi to miko out there what um i want to ask you what are some 
bits of like kernels of knowledge that we can take away from from what the surfing industry has done with their webcast and try to maybe apply it into into our sport well i feel like the biggest thing is the that people need to support the production Mm -hmm. you know uh i understand sometimes paying a 10 bucks for whatever i think it's 10 bucks a month the subscription for go sports it feels like it's a lot but is it really you know uh, not so for what it, you get exactly not, I mean, and, and yeah. if you're passionate about paintball and want this sport to, you know like you guys are just like me like I've, I've devoted most part of my life to paintball like i've done a bunch of other things around too but i keep coming back to paintball and i've been passionate about this sport forever you know yeah. in, in the end maybe people don't know but i'm i'm a kid from finland who was born and raised in finland mm-hmm. start playing paintball and somehow end up in san diego you know, winning World Cups with the best yeah. teams ever played, you know, so it, it is, it's a, it's a dream that, um, you know, you can do it and, and paintball is cool too, because you can do it in any time in your life. You can, you can be 45 years old and start playing paintball and have a great time, you know, playing the top yes. level. Yes. N- n- name me another other sport Absolutely. that you can go like a national World Cup to play. <laughs> so you've been playing paintball for a year. Well, you can't. Uh, no? Yeah. So, no. <laughs> so the, hey, uh, I, yeah, I do want to say one thing that, Go Sports is one of the most valuable tools that I have as a pro player. It's one of the most valuable tools that I have. I mean, I've been playing pro for 20 years now and only within, you know, the foreseeable past here have I been able to look at my phone and watch games, you know, and be able to study games the way that I'm able to study today. But you had to show up and wake up early or stay late to be at the field and watch games. That was the only way you got the knowledge yeah. Now you have it right in there. So for me to pay $10 a month, it's, it, I mean, honestly, it's the most valuable thing that you can do is, is watch these things, obviously playing as well, but it's such a valuable tool for that price. Yep. And that's like, I would, uh, I've been talking with this couple of people and I'm saying like, well, what if it's gone? You know, who's going to yeah. do it? <laughs> so then, then it's really, we're back in the stone ages, Yeah, <laughs> which puts me in a pack of like, the golden years of paintball like we had we had the magazines we had the paintball videos you know yeah. like 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 push like when the push movie came out like it was like life-changing for me when i was a kid i was like this mm-hmm. is what i want to do i want to be like you know be at the barbecue with the avalanche guys and, yeah. you know i want to be doing this <laughs> stuff so like uh th- those things were important and they've been kind of slowly disappearing you know magazines disappeared that was like the official avenue of uh, making things legit you know when you're a kid and you go in a store you get a magazine from the mail and you get all these pro players and like actual stories and articles uh, it's it makes it legit you know it makes it more mm-hmm. legit than looking it from the internet from uh from um you know even instagram or, posts, or whatever it something is. yeah we didn't Ex- have, exactly yeah uh-huh. so so yeah. those things have been falling apart and kind of disappeared obviously you know how the world is changing um, the webcast is really the only uh, legit professional paintball avenue that is still there, and I it, it blows my mind that people don't people complain. Not everybody. I'm I'm not like saying everybody, but yeah, uh, it just blows my mind that people don't like. It, everybody should be on it. You know, everybody should be uh-huh. supporting it, and it should be subscribing it if you if you are in a part of paintball. You know, I have That's, two subscriptions. There you go. Here's I have two. You know, one is for when we're at events. I can't have anyone else, you know, logging in. I'm trying to watch film. And the other is for, yeah. any, you know, any of my family or friends that wants to watch. That's but awesome. Like, yeah, I agree with you, Miko. I mean, it's it's really non-consequential to your budget <laughs> to pay exactly. 10 bucks a month. I guarantee you we can find uh, – easily you know you're probably wasting money on on coffee or booze whatever whatever it might yeah. be that you can put towards paintball and you're right I, like i think that the powers at b at least with go sports are going to do the right thing with that money you know i think that they're going to uh put that into production and if if there was a surplus of of money i think that they would do anything they could to make the show better right and that's ultimately 100%. what's going to help us you know grow this thing we need we need stats back, Miko. How do we get stats back? I, that, I think it's just the money. Like yeah. another thing like that, I don't think people had no idea how much that cost. You know, the organization having all those guys sitting there and getting stats. That was awesome, right? Yeah. You know, because you actually got an idea like who was who was playing good. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it comes to the, also like you need to have those stories told. You know, that, that was a big thing from 
me, like I didn't know any of these guys. Like when I was a kid, like living in Finland, you know, uh, not even playing pro, like you, you learn about these players and it's crazy. Like even you two guys are in a generation of that still maybe the most iconic players come from that generation of mid 2000s because those mm-hmm. guys were able to create their names through the videos and magazines and then webcast and everything else. And now the, the go sports webcast is pretty much the, one of the only channels, you know? So mm-hmm. which goes to the, the point that we were talking about, with, with, which uh, we're kind of doing right here right now, you know? Uh, yeah. So we, we uh, so I, I, if I can jump on that thing. So mm-hmm. uh, me and uh, size Barrow, I don't know if people remember Sizek, but Sizek was uh, an yeah. old Ironman player, uh, played in Ironman mid 2000s, and you know he's mm-hmm. been an involved paintball forever, mm-hmm. worked for Die a long time, you know now works at Post too, um, mm-hmm. and uh, so Sizek is kind of been talking about doing something like this, like hey, how do we bring paintball back, kind of like exciting again? So mm-hmm. we uh, launched yesterday a new platform called uh, Paintball Nerd. Dot com yeah uh and the idea is that we want to bring something back like actually like a news channel that it's nothing crazy you know but just reports news in paintball uh-huh. um but there's a one place that you can go and look the news and also like kind of tied into the instagram and all social media platforms that we're going to give these little teasers out and you know and then if you want to really read about it then you can go and go to the website and go to the article so that's awesome every, so everybody go check out paintballnerd.com uh, and follow us on Instagram. So uh, we'll yeah. see how it on, goes. But uh, on we'll... Instagram, it's paintball nerd underscore IG. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. That's it. Awesome. But, yeah, uh, some, someone already took the paintball nerd uh, IG. Yes. I'm, someone is holding it. He's going <laughs> to have $1 million for it. <laughs> so if you want to do charity, whoever is holding it, give it yeah. to us. Come on. John Reinhardt. <laughs> give I it see to Zizek. Zizek is a good guy. <laughs> John that's Reinhardt. He, yeah. Zizek follows him. He has oh, 13 there you go. followers. Oh. You guys are working on it. You're working on getting that Instagram. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> come on. Come on, John. Let us have it. But anyway, <laughs> Sizek Sizek is kind of the, the brains behind it. And he's doing, you know, all the work. And we, you know, it's crazy. We, we launched today and we already had like three, four guys reaching out to us who used to be legit people writing on magazines and doing contributing articles and they they already hit us up and they're like hey we want to write you know we want to do yeah. some stuff Amazing. that is so, awesome so that's cool that people are still excited about it and, and we literally like i think like 100 people have seen the whole thing yet you know <laughs> so it's like very fresh well i yeah. think that that, go, that goes to show too like there's been a massive void in that and i think people realize that it needs to happen and it will probably be successful if it's done right you know yeah and, and we want to we only want to bring people in who are like in some level of legit who knows what's going on uh, who mm-hmm. you know so we don't want to like have uh well i'm, I'm sure there's going to be rumors and stuff like we want to spread around but we're not keep we want to keep it kind of clean and like just like mm-hmm. tell tell what's happening and ma- making people to think about stuff you know like we, we just released a um, article about uh 10 man that well, well Sizek did a really good job writing it and we talked to a bunch of people about it and kind of like you know you, you guys know what's going on at 10 man right so they're basically yeah. they're basically as far as I understand, they want to like not allow the pro players to play in a pro league. Yeah, <laughs> this doesn't make absolutely it's crazy. zero sense. Zero it's sense crazy. in my my book. Call yourselves so, amateurs. No, or, or like actually have an idea of this. I don't know what you guys think about this. So, um, like I mentioned earlier, like I, um, I've done Brazilian jiu jitsu for a long time. I started with back in the Ironman days when Shala was in a team. Yeah, and uh, and jiu jitsu is uh, competing in jiu jitsu is very much like paintball. So. Uh, people kind of go past their prime, you know, but they still want to play. They still want to be on the top. They still want to call themselves professionals <laughs> and everything else. But like, like everybody knows, it's like, you know, you, you go like this and then you go down, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so jujitsu, they figured out, um, and which they actually had back in the day. So they have a eight categories. So uh, as soon as you turn 30, you go to the master's division. Then it's a master two, 35, master three and 40 master four and so on whatever uh, so basically people can still compete in the in the highest level in their own age category so i don't know uh-huh. if it needs to be the and i remember they had a master's division in uh in the pro cup i believe mm-hmm. like yes they do yeah uh they still do mm-hmm. yeah okay so but i think for the 10 man maybe there's something that 
maybe people would play against each other, but there is a final ranking in the end that bases on like maybe the experience points, whatever the, the APPA point, points or, or age mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, so let's say that you, maybe there's like, if, if you don't have a NXL pro ranked players in your roster, you are going to place in a different division in the end, you know, even you lose all your games <laughs> and there's I one see. team who doesn't have anybody. I don't know. I feel like there's something like that, but, but the idea of like banning, not allowing the teams to have the best players to play for the team, it's <laughs> dumb. <laughs> You know, so that just that's actually breaking news. Like that's just happening uh, within the last <clears throat> 24 hours. This has been all over Facebook, dude. Yeah. yeah. Is that why we're seeing the free infamous uh, hashtag? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, it, and, and actually, and the sorry. Yeah, it, the no, and that, go ahead. Yeah. I said the infamous was the team to beat, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you need those teams. You know, you guys play mm -hmm. both in the top teams. Like you need to yeah. have dynasties and yeah. Houston heats, you know? Totally. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I saw uh, Mike Hinman and we've been meaning to get Mike back on the show. He always has really great insight, but he's kind of been, you know, s talking about the industry, not needing pro players in the first place. And it was in response to, I think Brett Messer posted about um, 10 man and, you know, allowing the pros to play and, and, you know, it shouldn't be called the pro division. And Mike's response was in regards to how much does the industry actually need professional players and I would like to really pick his brain and push back on that because I think, you know, you might not notice an immediate effect, but I think that, that it's pretty short sighted. And I think that long term, if there were no like actual professional players, there would be a big hit to competitive paintball. That would be a big problem for, for the industry, for the, for the community as a whole, for companies. I, I, I don't see that perspective. Um, what about you, Miko? Do you have any, any thoughts on that? Well, I, I think the human nature is to drive uh, to perfection and compete in the different things and being like claiming that, you know, I'm, I'm better than you. So as long as there's paintball, there's going to be competition. So how do you, yeah. how do you get rid <laughs> of like the top of the competition? If just because the lower part is not happy that they're not good. You know, it doesn't make any sense. I, this isn't fair because he's not here. And again, so now, now I have to make a point to make sure we could get Hinge on the show. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's coming more from a place of like, we don't need to have pro players. Okay, so pay, I hear, you know, I, like we don't need to sponsor I, pro players. We don't need to do, you know, companies will do better if they don't. Um, we waste money on, on having pro players. And okay, so let me, let me that, counter question this. Uh, I, I, Mike Hinn is one of the smartest people and I hugely respect him. And I'm, this is nothing totally. against him or talking. Totally. I'm, this is the first time I'm ever, ever thinking about this. But if you cut out the, the top of the top. So I, I worked in the industry for a long time. And that keeps coming up that same idea that money does not come from the pro players. Well, it doesn't. Uh, money, the, the tournament uh a tournament group of people that goes in the world cup is tiny piece of people who actually go into the paintball fields and the birthday parties and you know just to play paintball like mm -hmm. like most of my friends when i you know say play paintball you always have the story of that like oh yeah yeah we went to this guy's birthday party or like bachelor's party and we play paintball so that's where the money is coming for the industry but if you take the the top of the top away and think like this is going to be just drive again what do, what do you think those people are going to do cop like one person out of 100 is going to get excited and they'd be like hey let's go let's go like see like if we can beat this other team well we're back 30 years where it started you know <laughs> and and then maybe 10 years we're going to be back here when those guys are going to have running a pro league because they got yeah. so much better and they want to compete we want to compete mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. so yes the money wise do the does the industry need um pro players or competitive competitive paintball no they don't but it's just gonna happen like i think I, I that's don't, so short-sighted i i think what yeah. i honestly do i really do i think like okay if you're comfortable with the money you're making now then possibly right mm -hmm. and and it's all good keep things status quo but as far as the growth of the sport especially with where we are right now i feel like we're getting more attention on paintball than we ever yeah. have and, and what clips were on sports center it's tournament paintball it's not not rec paintball yeah. Those clips that got millions of views on Sports Center's Instagram pages, that's tournament paintball. You mm -hmm. only have people that play tournament paintball because of professional paintball players and because of the, like you said, Miko, the competition. Yeah. Um, 
there's no clip on sports center of of a walk on you know in his camouflage with his rental gun shooting anything you don't have that the interest is in the fact that there is professional paintball that's kind of the conversation that's generating you know more and more attraction right now so i think it's more important than ever especially with where we're at now and and the possibility of eyes really starting to take notice you know 100 percent, and i and i think that uh like i say that it's event whatever happens they're always going to be competition and then it leads to professional paintball so we have this established system right now like why not support it you know and that that mm-hmm. comes to the point that what i was telling about like people supporting a co-sports people supporting uh you know they're uh, us having a different avenues like people like like a, okay so let's think like when i was a kid in finland i had no idea what the paintball was like we me and my brother and our neighbors literally like found paintball guns. We didn't know they were paintball guns. We didn't even know what the name was. They had this, you know, little balls with paint inside and you can shoot each other. You know, like, oh, this is sick. Well, mm-hmm. we should probably protect our eyes. So we used the motorcycle helmets and building helmets to do that. <laughs> nice. And then, then we start like finding this information, you know, like, oh, you know, there's actually competition. Let's go. We went to first tournament, no idea. Like we went, walked to the field, like, what are we doing? Uh, got shot to pieces, you know? But then we, <laughs> you, we, we went to internet. Internet was just coming around in late 90s. And we start finding like information from the forums. Then you got a paintball magazine. You're like, oh shit, like these guys are legit. I want to mm-hmm. do this, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so that's why I think we need to support professional paintball. So these people get excited about it. And people competing in a high level being excited about it leads to uh like evolution in, in the tech and gear and all the stuff like and it's kind of funny for me that sometimes we hear this stuff from the guys that were part of the you know evolution of paintball from coming from woods and shooting a little bump guns and now having all this amazing gear you know mm-hmm. and and like how can you forget that how can you like mm-hmm. think that well, because I have to give, you know, portion of my income to support the professional paintball. Like, mm-hmm. how can you, how can you forget that where you came from? Mm. Uh, so I don't know. That's just my opinion. I'm scrambling here, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't wait to have Mike on. It's always a great time. We love chatting with him. 100%. So we'll definitely have him on soon. And uh, I do want to ask, is there any, um, obviously you're with Go Sports now, you're going to be helping out on the back end. Is there any new like uh, developments that you're working on that, that you could share with us or anything like that? Mm, nothing. Darren is always like working on some cool stuff. So I'm sure there's going to be some yeah. new angles and stuff like. Love that. Uh, you know, like you guys see the little sky camera that's that's up there. Um, oh yeah, that thing's badass. Know, that, like that's a perfect example of like them figuring it out. You're, like they literally yeah. build it from the parts and now it's, now it's working. You know, it wasn't working for a long time. It was like mm-hmm. nightmare, you know? It's a but, game changer having that thing flying over the field mm-hmm. and getting all those angles. Um, it, I mean, it reminds me of NFL or something like that, yeah, where you, yeah. you get you get the really good shots. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, so what do you, what do you guys? Have? Let me ask you this, like, because I've I've been thinking about this a lot. Like, what are you guys thinking, like, about the format? You know, like, like we see ten men coming back, and now people are excited uh-huh. about it, and now they're trying to get rid of the players because they're too good. You know, <laughs> but but like, is is the is the NXL the, the format that paintball should be stuck with? Is the mm-hmm. that like X ball multi point, you know, style yeah. that we we kind of got pushed into in two thousand five? You know, mm-hmm. like it, it just happened. Some some big 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 guys decided that this is how paintball is going to be played. You know, is is mm-hmm. that the? Because you think like paintball was developing so quickly a long period of time. You know, mm-hmm. like every year there was something new. Like there was like. Now we're in a hybrid ball. Now we're playing on the on the, this sub air balls that had the, you know the big tubes on the side, and then we mm-hmm. had this massive field. There's five man, seven man, ten man, mm-hmm. and now we've been kind of stuck with the same X ball format for a long period of time. So, what, how is that like? You guys being like long long time players, how how what do you think about that? Like, is is there going to be more evolution in it? Um, yeah, I personally thoroughly enjoy it. I, there's always going to be evolution, you know, um, things are going to change. That's the only constant is change, you know, and, and uh, I guess um, the only thing that I could say is I'm sure that that there will be different forms of paintball. We're already seeing it with 10 man and there have been seven man tournaments, but the five man tournament is 
a very fast paced, exciting and thrilling experience for the viewer and for the player. So um, I think that you got to take, there can't be like big lulls in the game because it's not entertaining. Um, so however we can keep it exciting for the viewer and for the player and people having fun. I actually, it's funny. I was talking with Ryan Moorhead, shout out to Moorhead. Um, and we were talking about this and I was like, I don't think like, you know, you change the speed of the gun, you do the pods, you do this, that you change these things. I was like, it doesn't really matter. Like it's still gonna, we're still gonna go out there and, and pretty much do the same exact thing that we do is go crash them, bash them and, you know, go and uh, run each other over back and forth, play strategic games. Um, so I don't think that like doing little alterations to the format really changes too much. You know, obviously if you add players, um, if you do things like that, then it changes the game. But I, I personally enjoy what we're doing right now. Nice. Nice. Well, cause I had this crazy idea. I like Marcelo to get on that, but I, I was thinking mm -hmm. like, since we've been thinking about this, you know, kind of, I've been thinking about a lot of like the stories and like, you know, I work with the legendary players. I work with the Chris Lasoya, Brian Benini, you know, the guys who were like big names. And I'm like, that's bigger. Like, those are bigger than legends. Those are bigger. Yeah, than and legends. I'm thinking like, like Lasoya, for example, that, yeah. Would you become that big of a legend in the expo? Mm. Just playing expo because um, some of these previous formats and like, you know, people still play you could literally become famous making the one move, uh -huh. you know, like if, if this was a world cup final and you, you know, you were Marcelo, uh, it's that one game that matters and you run through the whole thing. And then there's a, you know, uh, magazines and broadcast and all this stuff reporting and talking about that player. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, do you guys think that has Expo kind of like making players more like a mass you know that it's like you know well you got the teams but it doesn't matter that much who who plays there i've been thinking I, about this a lot you yeah know? that's a that's a good point miko i definitely see where you're coming from but i think what x-ball has done is it magnifies the greatness even more because when a player is great throughout the entirety of an x-ball match it really is worth writing about. It really is worth putting that person on a pedestal, you know, and that's why those MVPs are so, so coveted, so hard to get. You have to do it through the entirety of an event, multiple matches, multiple points, you know, by the end of Sunday, you've played, you know, 50 points maybe. And uh, you, you really have to execute in majority of those in order to, to get those accolades, but you are right in seven man. And actually I kind of want, kind of want to regress a little bit to your question about the league and the format. Um, I would love if there was more, um, I think seven man is fantastic. I, I wish there was a format as well, where the fields were a little bigger. You played seven man format, because I think that would open things up for bigger moves, you know, uh, really cool play style. You see that with 10 man, there's a lot of excitement because it's a, a fun format. That's kind of nostalgic for people, but I also agree with Tyler. I love the five on five X ball format that we do play. I wouldn't want that to go away. I would just want to add to it. Um, I think more formats and more, you know, you bring up like surfing. I usually, I don't know much about surfing, but like snowboarding or even motorcycles There's so many different types of professionals, Exactly. you know, you're, you're either like a trick skater, vert skater, you can do things, you know, it, it's, it's the same kind of sport. You're using the same vehicle. We're using the same paintball gun, but there's many different ways that you can play. And I think the more more is better for sure in that regard. I think there's so many exciting ways and we can capture so much great footage and stories if we had more opportunity to do so. So how about if the championship league of paintball would be one stop playing 10 man at the woods, one stop, maybe two tournaments playing in a tournament, one stop playing in a freaking walk-on field but where it's like literally tanks on there like you know like make it like yeah because, because yeah. a lot of people who don't know paintball that's what they want to see you know that's yeah like people in the clown suits running around with the airball bunkers <laughs> looks fucking crazy you know let's be honest <laughs> it's like if you don't know what you're looking you're like holy shit what's going on here these uh -huh. guys have like a bright suit on and they're running around with the, with the little jump things you know I, so, I don't i don't wear clown suits no, that's, that, that's are, um yeah i think that's cool. houston heat wears those Oh, yeah, you yeah. better watch it. <laughs> yeah. All right. We, we wear the same gear, <laughs> just different colors. So, well, funny story here. So, uh, Tyler, when you uh, 
uh, uh, change the teams, uh-huh. I, I went to work with these guys up in uh, North County, uh, North, North California for yep. practice. And yep. uh, so uh, I had a I had a pants that I got from HK, and they were uh, Houston Heat Heat pants. So I walked in there and was like, <laughs> HK specifically sent me these pants to wear on this practice. First time. Uh, <laughs> actually, I sent those pants. That was me. I know that was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, yeah. back to it. Uh, so Good times. <laughs> so the funny Got thing is, Marcel, you, you, uh, uh, you say that like how surfing stuff, because that's what happened. Like if you look at the championship tour in surfing, um, there is events that they're going to surf a small beach break that the different people are going to do really well. And then they're mm-hmm. going to do Chobu. That's going to be, you know, 30 foot barreling wave. That's going to kill you if you don't you surf it right, you know, but but then the experienced guys and like the guys who do big waves do well. So there is a nice variation between the events. And I think it keeps it kind of interesting. Obviously very different thing than paintball, but we do have all these different formats and stuff. And like, would it, isn't, would it be like, because I do believe that the best teams would be still the best teams, even it would be mixed with the different, mm-hmm. different categories. I, I've been thinking about this a long time and I, 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 I would like to see paintball to go that direction, you know? Mm-hmm. In yeah, we've, we've, we've spoke on the show, um, you know, there's been tournaments, I think Valken did a tournament one time yeah. where they had a bunch of different segments and it's definitely something that, that could come to fruition in the future. Um, but right now I think the, the generations that are playing paintball, like the younger gen, they're, they're super hyped on, on the five man, the fast paced and, mm-hmm. and, and how it's developed. I don't know that they would fully pick up these bigger style games you know unless they've played them quickly because it is like you're speaking about it's a completely different way of playing paintball um the flow of the game is completely different than a five-man x-ball game so um it would it would definitely be interesting to see you know how how the new era uh would adapt to that kind of thing definitely like yeah that'd Mm -hmm. be fun to see and you mentioned something there like uh all these young kids coming in a paintball. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it feels like that's a little bit of a problem in a paintball because, mm-hmm. uh, because I, I'm, I take five years of break going to some events and then I go back, I see all the same people. They're just a little bit older <laughs> and not that many new people. So uh, mm-hmm. how, do we, how do we get more, you know, like I, one thing I do think about is happening in paintball that the top level um, X-ball format playing is so far and this this goes for the other sports too it's happening the same ways it's so far from the the first time we're going to play walk-ons in camp pendleton or you know Mm -hmm. velocity in san diego um how do you reach that gap and get people excited i don't know that's i don't have an answer for that but that's definitely a problem it's completely up to the pro players that are playing right now it's completely on on our shoulders you know and that's why marcelo and myself um every weekend, every day of our life is spent thinking about how we can push paintball for how, how we can help the new gen learn the tricks of the trade so that they can take our jobs someday. And, uh, and it's a really big responsibility that we all have as paintball players to make sure that everyone has a good experience. And I'm, I kind of disagree because I see a lot of kids playing yeah, paintball okay. right now. I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe I, that's, that's true. But like, yeah, I was going to say, so Mika, what I think you're referring to is in the pro division. It's a lot of the yeah. same pros, but what you're that's seeing true. is, yeah. is the ability okay. to have longevity in our sport. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's such a cerebral game that the older players are the more experienced and they're still in shape, in shape mm-hmm. enough to compete. So that's kind of why you're seeing it. But yeah, yeah. there is a whole wave of kids that are chomping at the bit and really close truly like we just flew you know we just had a uh, ben come out to our practice this last weekend he's 17 years old you know he's been someone that's come up to the bki camp we've had eyes on him and he performed really well there's players on on blast camp there's players on the new england hurricanes there's there's a bunch of young kids across the country and i'm sure i'm sure across the globe um that are definitely getting closer um I think uh, back to keeping people excited and, and like what Tyler said, it is a really big responsibility, but it's easy. It's really easy as a pro player, mm-hmm. go to the field and show up, just yeah. be there, be at the field when you don't have practice, either help out, get games. in. that's what, that's what it was like when we were younger, when we were younger, we would go to the field. I was four foot 11 had, you know, <laughs> 
pants that were way too big. They didn't know what I was doing. And looking I saw like Isaac a clown. Looking like a clown. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, well, look at me now, baby. Wanted it, though. Wanted it. <laughs> well, but, once they see your hair, they're really going to call you a clown. <laughs> <laughs> That's top secret right now, buddy. Um, uh -oh. So <laughs> I would show up to the field to play walk-ons and people like Zizek Barrow would be there. Davey Williamson, you know, Billy wing. These were the guys that were out at the field and they were approachable. I could go up and talk to them and hang out with them. They would invite me to play games. Maddie Marshall was out there, you know, mm -hmm. a, a lot of these, these, these pros. And that is what made me excited. That is what hooked me, you know, because that gap was no longer such a gap. I saw in my backyard, these are professional players. This is the lifestyle that I want. Look at these guys. You know, I'll never forget Billy Wing had this blue Lexus that I thought was so freaking cool. You know, I had I it. Like, that was my you, first car. I bought oh, it from Billy. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah, awesome. I loved that car. You know, like I totally looked up to him for, you know, he had that so car and he played pro paintball. And yeah, and so did Miko. <laughs> I did. You know, but. And I know it's a, a superficial thing, but again, as a kid, you see that and you're like, oh man, this is, there is a lifestyle behind this, you know, in the push mm -hmm. videos, the Sunday driver videos, the magazines that solidified the, the lifestyle behind the pros that I saw at the field. So really it's everything we, mm -hmm. we gotta be doing it all, you know, and the pro players, it's a big responsibility, but it's easy. Mm -hmm. Get out there and show up first. That's, that's, that's the awesome. first step. Uh, it is kind of crazy to realize though, that, um, from that mid 2000s to early, you know, 2010, 2011 generation, it's that how many top pros that who kept playing are still playing. It's, it's mm -hmm. incredible because back in when I was a kid, like when you were like 35, you were done. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you, you, like there's a couple of guys who, you know, were able to keep it going and play in the top level. But like, overall it was, it was like, you were done, but I do mm -hmm. feel like that there's, in that era, there was so much money pushed into paintball. Like you remember, like what our uh, quantities of paint was when we were playing the Ironman. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, like I, when I was playing for Russians, I shot about thirty-five to fifty cases by myself every week. Wow! And I played, that's... I played paintball five days a week, six hours a day. That's amazing! Wow! Fully, fully professional. Yeah. So. So that, and, and when we were, we had a ranch, I don't know if you guys ever talked about it in the show, but uh, yeah, so we have. They, mm -hmm. they, they bought us a ranch in San Diego where Ironman was practicing when what well, was basically the birthplace of the super team Ironman on 2007 and 2008. Um, and, and again, that went like, we, we had like a two skits of paid for every weekend and we would play three days in a row and then go do drills on Wednesdays, you know? So, mm -hmm. so I, I, maybe that's the reason that, you know, that kind of put the level where it for is sure. with you guys, you know, and that, and, and it's hard for these young guys to get there because just not to be able to have that pain and money available to practice enough, you know, yeah, I, 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 I think, I think, I think it's a, I think it's a bit of a problem. Obviously eventually it's going to just go away, you know, like the mm -hmm. players are going to fade away, but it, it's been a little bit of problem maybe the last five years, you know, I, I, th mm -hmm. I think you're also seeing a, a similarity in all sports too. I think just overall, people are being more mindful of how they age, yes. you know, and doing things to take care of their body and, and the way they eat and, and all of those things. You're seeing that across sports. I mean, look at Tom Brady, you know, yeah. <laughs> look at that guy. Right well, you now. can look, you can look at Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he, look, yeah. he doesn't look, he doesn't look too good. But he, he doesn't look good, good, but he's playing yeah. good. Oh, amazing. He's playing yeah. good though. But yeah, he kind of looks like he's homeless. <laughs> yeah. He just, yeah, that's oh, a style, man. Yeah. I, uh, uh, he just got COVID. So hopefully he recovers oh, well. well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you see, you see these athletes in all these other sports right now, LeBron James, you know, like they're, they're doing a great job of taking care of themselves and, and pushing, uh, pushing their career, you know, a little bit longer. Yeah. I think that goes across the board because I, I feel like when people were like 40 and 50 years old, 30 years ago, they looked so much older, you know, mm -hmm. than nowadays that the athletes can just like maintain better, you know, hundred mm -hmm. percent. So Miko, I want to know about your story, like before paintball, like, uh, you know, in Finland and then kind of like your precursors to paintball and then how, how you fell in love with the game. Uh, I grew up in, uh, like middle, middle Finland, a place called Silindjärvi. It's close to Kuopio, which is, uh, like, it's a, it's a bigger city in Finland, but still very small. Um, but we had like this amazing, like we have this amazing family ranch, you know? Yeah. So um so we we literally discovered paintball guns 
from the local like a drift store and there was like a splatmaster gun and then like we end up they had a couple of rental guns or something and we end up like taking him and uh it was me and my brother and our neighbors and we just like didn't know what we're doing but we're like okay we're shooting guns each other this is fun you know (laughs) and then that went on a couple years we just kept doing it and then like i said i think i guess the internet was a big thing because we were able to find information that there's other people who do the same thing and there's Mm -hmm. competition and competition was something that i was like drawn to like i wanted to be good i i never was good in anything but i have a really good work ethic so um, I, I put the work in, like, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm not good at it. So I got to like work harder than everybody else. So mm. I just kept playing a lot, playing a lot, playing a lot. And then opportunity came from Russian Legion. Uh, eventually, uh, I left everything. I based, this is terrible. Kids don't do this. <laughs> so cause I, I, I went for it. I went for the painful dream, you know, and it worked mm. out for me, but there's a good chance. Sometimes it doesn't work out. So mm-hmm. like, this is like the parent's nightmare. So <laughs> I, I, I was in the college and I say like, you know, I am going to move to Moscow and go play with Russian Legion. I'm going to compete in the highest level and I, I'm, I'm going to be good. And I went, I went tryouts in a, in a Moscow and it's funniest thing because like they destroyed me. They were so good, you know, <laughs> so good. And then we were, we were sitting at this meeting with the, cause they, like people i don't think people understand how professional russian legion is Mm -hmm. and i don't know if they still are but how professional they were in like early 2000s so the team was funded by this billionaire super rich dude who fell in love in paintball sergey Mm. leonitov uh something like that um kind of strange dude you know (laughs) like he, he had this very characteristic um kind of voice and way to express himself um and uh but he loved paintball and he was like i was like i am gonna make the best paintball team in the world you know mm. and he hired like all these top coaches uh built a facility you know i think the early guys were like from his security team and guys you know like mm-hmm. who played in the paintball um and i was there when kind of the the second wave the best of the first wave and second wave was playing you know mm-hmm. so that was like when Fedorov and Miskov, they were all kids. Uh, they came, they were on the team for like maybe like a year before me, a couple of years before me. Uh, and and that's when like the first year of the Russian Legion being like a super team, you know, was. Yeah. And they, then that year, they, what the problem was, the reason I got on was they recognized the problem that we have a great training system and basically everything, you know, we got the money, we can do this. But we don't have that much talent because we don't have that many players that play paintball in Russia. So they kind of open it up and start asking people to come try out for the team and make the arrangements that it was basically worth of doing. Like, like I said, for, for me, that year was like we're, we're getting a housing. We got a monthly salary and we just played paintball. Like, and, and, but it was like, in the level of professional that it wasn't fun always. Like it, it, it was so hard. People ask me like, so you lived in Moscow, like you guys partied and you were like, uh, I think I was like 19 or something. Right? And I'm like, no, like when we were done training, I slept, like yeah. I slept like all, like I didn't do shit, you know, like I would be <laughs> sleeping the next day because I had a day off and then I would be practicing again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I think the year we came to play the Northeast Open in, uh, in the US, that, that's the first ever, event that foreign team won in us a pro level and and i think we kind of like it like woke woke everybody up it was people were like holy shit like where did these guys come from like like i was funny Mm -hmm. because i was actually talking to la soya the day and he's like i never forget but like you were like you had this fucking crazy hair and you're like i like looked and you snapshot me in the face and i'm like well that was a good shot (laughs) you know (laughs) but it but it kind of woke people up and then it took a couple years i think for um, American teams to like kind of catch up with that technical ability, and um, I maybe I'm wrong, but I, I really think the Russians changed a lot of things like snap shooting sure. and stuff. Like I, I remember coming to first Ironman practice uh, when I started playing with Ironman, and we're doing snap shooting drills, and I'm like, dude, you guys suck. 
Like, <laughs> but then you would have like believing going to Visor and like shooting everybody on the actual game. So the, the uh-huh. understanding of the game was here in yeah. US and, right. and the talent for sure. Like the, the people who come up in US in the, the top level, you're talented, like you have it, you know? Um, from the Russian camp, it was like, no, you, you fucking work, you know, you work mm-hmm. hard and, and then uh, you're going to get it, you know? And, yeah. but it, it's the, but they changed the game, like on a snap shooting and just the, like the pure athleticism, like, and performance and kind mm-hmm. of uh, the coaching, everything, like they brought the whole nother level into the paintball. And it took a little while for US teams to adapt. And I, and I, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's funny thing is that, but I, and I feel like then I jumped in the other team right after that, the Ironman that, you know, took it to that level, you know, yeah. with, with Shane being the coach and like, you know, having the all-star roster basically at the time. Um, so it, it, I'm, I'm so fortunate and happy that it, it happened to me in, in paintball career, you know, it was mm-hmm. epic. So I do got to ask, what was your yeah. first paintball team name? Did you guys have uh, like a, a team that you started? It was a war, it was a war dogs. The war dogs. Yeah, the, the war, war dogs. dogs. Yeah. <laughs> That's shout tight. out. Um and, I and then also you kind of went quick and like uh how you got into the Russian camp and everything, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would love to know like how you got good, how how you honed yourself. And you know, I'm sure it didn't happen overnight, how long that process took and any advice that you could, you know, shed on that. So the the I actually remember like it, it's crazy because it was such a significant time in my life. Uh, I remember it really well. So when I when I got there, like the level was here, and I was maybe here, you know. Mm-hmm. But I did have some good things. Like I had, I like even a tryout, I end up like doing good moves and doing stuff like that. Also, at the time, the rate of fire was kind of a big deal, and I I, I was shooting really fast. So yeah. I, I I played piano all my life. So I played instruments all my life. So uh-huh. I had really fast fingers. So I was shooting like well, also they were shooting like the old school angels. And yeah. I had like an NYX matrix. So it was like, I was just like destroying people at the trial. <laughs> but it, it was funny because they actually, uh, I was teaching the whole team all these ways to make your fingers faster. Like uh-huh. all this, like from playing instruments, uh, you can train your fingers like any other muscles, you know? So like, and it's mostly coordination. So uh, the whole team was doing all these exercises and stuff. But anyway, so how, what it took me, uh, it was probably like a couple months uh, training with the best but training five days a week, six hours a day, uh, I noticed that I started to like kind of start messing up with people. And then you had the top guys who are so good. Like I still feel like, like Miska, for example, like he, he's just like next level. You're never going to be that good. You know, and it's pure snap shooting, <laughs> better of, you know? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, it then like probably like a half, like six months in, I, I felt like I was like in there. And that's when I was starting in the top five. You know, it took mm-hmm. a little while to get there, but, but the cool thing was we were playing at the European series, uh, Millennium, e- I think it was called EXL at mm-hmm. the time. Um, and the, like the, all the other teams were like, we were beating everybody like 25 to zero, you know, it, it was ridiculous. Like, like you would win one on fives, like it was out of control because the, the level was so different, you know, mm-hmm. to talk, basically having these teams that it was a hobby and they would pay everything to having a fully funded professional team. Um, and then it, I think it made us like confident and it especially taught me about winning because it became more almost like there was no option to lose that you like, it, it was everything to win, you know, like, like you're so accustomed to win that when we came to us and played event here, it was kind of like a mindset already. Like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna like, play second you know let's let's win mm-hmm. this thing and and the only tournament we won lost that year was the world cup and we lost the dynasty uh mm-hmm. in uh in a kind of controversial match in my point but refing wasn't the best but because a lot of people do know that at back in the days like russians did not cheat there was no cheating whatsoever like people would come off like literally get hit on a fingertip and they would come off so um let's talk about that match what went down let's talk about it i, I don't remember that well actually i the first point was like, I think, I remember the first point, it was me and uh, me and Ryan had a like long one-on-one and we shot each other and that that's pretty much, but, but I, I just like, uh, I remember just like being like, oh my God, like I shot that guy five times, but he's still going, you know, <laughs> but that's, that's just my side of the story, you know, okay. like, but, um, 
uh, the first event, but we also you gotta remember the good refs were in the, on the NXL field mm-hmm. because that was the NXL league was going on, and we had the division one refs where actually the real right. pro tournaments were. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> on on the first event when we played in a, at the Northeast Open in Pittsburgh, uh, they brought the pro refs into the finals, and the World Cup that didn't happen, but blaming refs, you know, we all done it. Whatever mm-hmm. we lost, we lost. And and, and the final thing, Dynasty won. We lost, but it was a good year. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Russian Legion, man, what a what a camp. What a yes. I don't historic. know how that is nowadays, but it, it was it was ridiculous at the time. Like it was crazy. Yeah. Oh, they're crazy. still going after it. It's been you know, God bless them. Uh, my heart goes out to all those guys that have having to you know deal with everything that's been going on the last couple seasons because mm-hmm. it hasn't been easy. Oh, um, definitely not. <laughs> And we hope to uh, we hope to see them back in full force here shortly. Yeah, no, uh, and I see kind of like it's cool to see that they have like trained a whole new wave of players, and they're, yeah. they're still crushing it. You know, they're one of the, they're one of the powerhouse teams for sure, and they've they've been doing it for a long time. So it's very, very respectful, respectful. You know, oh, it's in it's it's like hardwired in their system. You know, they just yeah. they know how to create great paintball players, and then. Um, like you said, you know, learning the game and picking up all the tricks and, and different ways to play the game that comes, but they definitely know how to hardwire people to play. Oh, hundred percent. And it, it's like, like I say, the whole thing, how they brought coaching into this, these guys had no clue yeah. about paintball. They never even seen a paintball, but they used the time and studied like, like the stats of Russian leagues were so good that they would literally know, like. Like, no, we're going to run you there because it's like 37% chance you can get shot. <laughs> but every 37% you make it, you kill everybody, you yeah. know? So like even the date, like, I don't think nobody has that information, you know? I don't think they even do because they used to fly like a staff of coaches into the tournament. They had like five, five guys, you know? That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but I think their players are like more adapted to uh, like even the new players, they they play like everybody else, you know? Oh yeah. yeah because, yeah. because I, I feel like back in the days that how Russians played, it looked different too, you know? Mm-hmm. So no, the Russian but, legion to, to this day is not, you don't sleep on and no. don't sleep on anybody. They all got paintball guns, but you know, especially um, those guys, they all know how to ball. hundred percent. No, that they, they are, they are amazing. Yeah. And then, so how did it all progress from, you know, the Russian legion getting in the camp? Let's talk about like your, first two three years and then and then how it all progressed for you well i i was only i, I played russians only a year and then i had some life stuff i'd take care of and then uh i uh we played in san diego um what was it called commander's cup yeah yeah so uh, that was the year when like i think that the nxl teams were allowed to play first time or the players were the teams were not mm-hmm. um and and we came over so uh, the english team nexus had the pro spot yeah and they were losing the spot if they didn't make it to sunday so they decided the owner decided to hit up sergey and say like hey why don't we pay russian legion to come play as nexus at the event because they probably do better than our own players <laughs> it's kind of crazy if you think about it well we did so so they got their spot but uh i end up staying in san diego for a while um my really good friend and roommate uh eggy ericocla who's you know kind of the guy with a lot of the paintball gear nowadays uh he was living in san diego he just got hired by die so i stayed with him hang out billy wing brian benini uh, some of the other guys and then two three months later like uh billy was definitely the guy who was driving he was like hey I, we want you in a team like like we, let's make this happen you know let's bring you to the us um we'll work out your visas and like we do uh uh but then brian brian was on board right away which is kind of funny like now we work with brian again to push you know yeah. but he, he was the guy that was basically like okay let's let's make this happen like let's let's bring you in like they gave me a job just like a entry level job at die because I was like, well, how, how do I'm like, like, okay, so you guys not pay me this or, you know, how, how is this going to work out? So they're like, well, we'll, we'll sponsor you with tons of stuff, but we'll give you a job that you can play painful as much as you want, you know? So that's, that's how it all started with Ironman. And, wow. Cool. And Ironman was kind of crazy when I first came because that's when everybody left. 
Uh huh. So the first year I was back, that was the year that we still played the NXL. Um, and it was like in the words of crashing down. Um, <laughs> and people think we're like, we're like that team. But in, in the matter of fact, we were not because we, we won the, we won the, um, Semi pro uh, MPPL that year, so like we yeah. were the top, we were the top team at that league, mm-hmm. and that was kind of like, uh, in many ways, that was the pro league, you know. And then because because the NXL teams were not allowed to play, I don't know if people know that, but they couldn't yeah. play the pro in MPPL because there's all these fights and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and then next year, it kind of changed again. We we had a couple which was awesome i got to play with billy saransky and todd adamson and brian williams and then shane became a coach then oliver came in a team and that was kind of a in in my opinion it was kind of a shit show you know because there was such a big dynamic change um with certain (laughs) with certain people holding the team like it, it was definitely more like dave wasn't that involved at the time and then suddenly like overnight it was like okay, now Shane is running the team and Oliver is in the team and everybody's expecting these things, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and it didn't go exactly well with a lot of people, you know? I, a couple of people quit. <laughs> um, There's a weird dynamic. We went to first event, like we played terrible, like terrible. Like it was, it was like absolutely horrible. Probably the first, one of the worst tournaments I ever played. And uh, even like, I remember like even having the problems with Shane for my, like personally, like it was at the practice, I felt like I was playing really good. And the year before I was playing really good and I was like kind of the main guys playing. And then this whole new dynamic change happens. And I was like sitting, but we're losing like 10 points every game. So I went to Shane. I'm like, Shane, like, like I, I need to play bro. And say, you know, you know how <laughs> Shane is in, coach. and Shane is like, looks at me like, kid, you want it. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay. And I went like, like, crushed it you know and he's like okay now when you play and that was it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then it then it kind of next year the, we got was that the year we got the rants when you came in team you came in the middle of the year right we was came out. in the middle of 06 yep yeah so did you just call us the runts no 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 oh. uh the ranch <laughs> we so, oh the ranch yeah so we were, so we were also the runts we were these yeah you were then yeah <laughs> I, I do have a story marcelo came to die and he just got in the team and uh, we were doing snap shooting and like, you were just getting so mad if you got shot. I was like, who is this little kid? He's like 15 years old and he's like angry, like stumping his feet in the crowd. It's like, God damn it, I can't get shot, you know? <laughs> anyway, and, anyway, he still stomps his feet. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, really, you, everyone's lucky if I am just stomping my feet. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was funny, like the that those were the transition years that like, it didn't look like Ironman was that strong outside, but those were the necessary steps to build the team that became like really, really strong. And mm-hmm. it took that, it took that one year, but the team wasn't that bad before. Like we were placing good, but it wasn't the top team, you know? And then, uh, then it went from there. Oh, oh seven, like we were strong, you know, that was, that was a strong team. Mm-hmm. and uh 08 was strong and then started kind of like fading away you know so mm. but but yeah it was like those were the those were the best years and for me playing paintball was definitely those two ironman years that that like everybody in the team were friends you know and, yeah. and you have you have that bond bond in the team like the the tie between everybody and everybody was ready to do for anything like and and people had that like you had characters like characters characters like Mr. You in the team who yes. like necessarily wasn't the best player, but God, his heart was bigger than anybody's, you know, and he yeah. made you play better. Shane as crucial. a coach, Shane as a coach, Shane wasn't the most best technical coach, but he had, he has this amazing ability, which I yet to see is to bring the best out of each player in their own way. Like he would have mm-hmm. the way to talk to you in a certain way that you were like, I'm going to play good. I'm mm-hmm. not going to let him down. I'm not going to let my teammates down. Mm-hmm. Like we're, I'm, I'm, I'm going to win, you know? And yes. that eventually created that the whole team wanted to win, you know? And that, that was, that was incredible to be part of. And, and totally. thanks for, thanks, thanks for die making it happen. You know? It, Absolutely. So that, that was like, like um, it's, it wasn't a cheap hobby, you know, but it also, I going back to the, do we need pro players? I feel like it made die to be, the top 
top company in our industry, you know? Boom. Honestly. Having, yeah. Those are massive years. Having, having like the, you know, Oliver's big deals and, and, you know, people talk about a lot of Oliver, but the whole team was stacked, you know, yeah, the whole team sure. was, and, and whole team was taken care of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of, well, you, you can't, you can't win. One player is not going to win a tournament. I mean, point no. blank, you got to have a, a great team. That's yep, the only 100%. way you win these tournaments, you know? hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's amazing, dude. And you've been able to travel around the world, uh, play paintball in the far stretches of, of paintball, you know, from all corners of the world. So, um, maybe you, can you talk about that? Like where has, uh, where's paintball taken you? What's some of your favorite spots you've been able to go to? Well, the one, one cool thing was that with the iron. So when, when I was, when we were back in uh, Moscow in Russian Legion, so the two other foreign players were uh, Dan Maskell and Shalo Almeida. Uh, mm-hmm. And those become like, became like my brothers, you know, we, we were super tight. We called, her, called ourselves a foreign legion. And then nice. Shalo ended up coming to San Diego and play for Ironman. Uh, and he was my roommate. And like, anyways, like, so I got to do a lot of traveling to the South America and I loved it. Like, Mm-hmm. In, in everywhere in south america and then through die between the ironman and the work like we got the, we went everywhere like we yeah play, we, we play paintball in every continent somewhere you know mm-hmm. and it was one one weekend we we're playing in uh south uh south africa one way one weekend we we're playing in brazil next weekend we we're playing in uh uh you know germany next weekend we we're playing in malaysia so it, it was it was amazing mm-hmm not something you want to do like i personally i don't want to do like rest of my life because it was a lot of traveling yeah but um but being like in your you know early and mid 20s and be able to do that like that's priceless oh right? man absolutely that's, plus that's pay, paintball has the cool thing that because paintball is expensive in a lot of these places so so when you travel kind of to poor countries the people who play paintball they're they're pretty well off so mm-hmm. the experience is traveling those places were usually really nice. Mm, so, absolutely. but my favorite place is definitely, I love Brazil. Like I love to go down there. Um, I really actually like one of my favorite trips ever was for South Africa. That mm-hmm. was, I went there with uh, Rocky Gagnoni and it was like just epic trip all the way. You guys go to Cape town. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's one of the coolest cities, dude. It's Cape so Town's amazing. It's so sick. Yeah. I actually have a story, uh, Ro- Rocky, uh, flooded this whole hotel oh, no. <laughs> yeah, he, so he he's infamous of uh falling asleep in in uh bathtubs and showers so like <laughs> i don't know there's something we might have been drinking a little bit partying whatever and i wake up in the middle of the night and i like step down and it's like there's like this much water in the <laughs> a few and inches I'm just, and I'm, I'm like opening the door and i look and rocky is like passed out but it's like his butt cheek is like blocking the train <laughs> and it's just like flooding everything so then i like I, I like grab my back go to my our friends jeremy who was a sales rep for die uh shout out to shit jeremy awesome dude uh from south africa and we go i'm I just knocking this door and it's like dude open the door i'm like he's like what i'm like just like i need to come sleep here he's like why so then we wake up like in a couple of hours and they're like, hey, do you guys have like a water damage happening somewhere? One of your rooms you're staying? I'm like, yeah, 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 it's it's happening. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we like, it's happening. We, we like we walk out and there's like <laughs> like 50 people there. Like Rocky's running around with this little towel and he's like, he's like, can I help somehow? You know, blah 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 blah. There's water <laughs> everywhere, tripping three floors down in the reception oh, no. area. Oh yeah, boy, it was it was not good. But it so so then we're we're like, we gotta go, dude. Like we have to leave. Like let's let's move. Yeah. They're like, hey, you guys gotta stop. Like, you gotta pay for this. And it was like $120 cleaning fee. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, all right, that's good. All right, let's go. Jeez. We'll pay for but, that. Yeah, we had a- Rock, we had Rocky on the show, and he was talking about when he went to uh South Africa, but he he left that story out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He doesn't like he doesn't want to hear that, you know. <laughs> uh, we actually but- uh one of our PTG fam uh family members shadow he was wondering if you could go anywhere in the world where would it be and why oh that's a hard question yeah hmm. where know. have you not gone yet i don't know it probably would be one of the places i already been yeah um i don't know there's so many good places i visited and maybe some places i want to visit still but I, mm-hmm. I, it, that's a hard question 
I like to go home a lot too. I like to go Finland. <laughs> like, yeah. So like, if you normally now when you ask like where you want to go, I'm like, dude, I'm I'm going to Finland. Yeah. Hang up a little bit. Absolutely. So, so but um, the, some of the favorite places definitely was we had an awesome trip to Tahiti with Oliver. Did a pro mm-hmm. school there. That was like one of my top trips. Um, and I always like to go to Brazil. Like I've been there 13 or 14 times, I think. And I nice. I need to planning to go there again soon. When when the travel opens a little bit, it's yeah, really tough right, right now. Mm-hmm. This has been crazy, Miko. This is the longest I've gone since I was 18 years old without going to Europe or Australia, any any of these places, South America. I mean, it, yeah. it it's weird. It's strange. It's uh, I miss it. I cannot wait to be able to play paintball in these these uh, beautiful places again. You you went you went with me the first years, right? The with Benfica. <laughs> Yeah, 2008. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Malaga was my yeah. first first uh, international trip. That yeah, we was a played great with one, uh, yeah. Portuguese team Benfica. That was yeah. uh, that was a great group. People, shout out to Hugo. <laughs> did shout out to Hugo, dude. Yeah. So you did? Did you go to Portugal with me early? Uh, I feel like you weren't there. No, no, I didn't. That's right. Yeah, because I feel like I landed. I remember my first yeah. trip. I, I was by myself. Yeah, you know, I came a little I did, late. I had to work. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And I had never met Hugo. Um, you know, so I was like 17 years old landing in a foreign country for the first time yeah. by myself, not really sure who's I've picking see this up. movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think it was right around the time taken was released. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was like, huh, but that, that was such an amazing trip, man. My goodness. You know, uh, that's just one of the amazing things that paintball does for, for you, the opportunities to travel. And like you said, what was his, wasn't the other guy's name Hugo also that owned the restaurants? No, uh, it started Tiago. with a T. Tiago, Tiago, Tiago yeah. that's right. He was a baller. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Tiago is who we need to give a shout out to. He was like a top dog model, beautiful man, great restaurant right on the, on, he yeah. owned this restaurant that Amazing. was like on this massive hill that overlooked the whole city. Amazing, beautiful. Some of the best food I've ever had. Well, and that's one of the, you know, like we, we don't make millions playing paintball yet. Hopefully, you know, maybe one day people do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but those life experiences you do get uh, with traveling with the team and with your friends and then like be able to play with these teams around the world. Like that mm-hmm. was, a, that was the coolest part when you were, I was playing in a team in South America. I was playing in a, you know, Ironman here and the international tournaments what Ironman played and then played a team in Europe. Like I played the Nexus, uh, Benfica, mm-hmm. Cyclone, like that, that was amazing. You know, you, you can't, can't, can't get better at that you can't pay for the experiences that we've no. been able to have. Like you can't go to a travel agent and say, Hey, I would like to book this, this, and this, I'll give you $500,000. Like the experiences that we've been fortunate enough to have from traveling internationally with teams from these areas, you just can't buy them. And it's, it's really special. That's always been, and always will be my favorite part of paintball. And and still, you know, like if, even like until like the last couple of years, like I still played the Mexican events you know and yeah. stuff like and there's always like chance to, like last time i went to brazil like we played the brazilian championships like last year when i was stuck in finland for like almost five months was well, stuck and stuck uh, we we played we won the finnish championship at uh was and carumpalo Serra, which is basically all the guys i started playing paintball with some of the guys um and they just haven't nowadays that they've reconnected and they have a team now and that's when right I, when i when i go back home and miska plays with us you know yeah so yeah. we, 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 when we scan, we played in one, one event, we destroyed people. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hell it was yeah. good. It was good. <laughs> That's awesome that you guys all got back together and, and like uh, full circle, you know, got to play again. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And it's, uh, it, it's cool that paintball does that. You have these friends around the world and wherever you go, mm-hmm. like I can still fly to Indonesia or something like and go be like hit up the paintball guys. I used to hang out and be like, yeah. they'll, 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 have, they'll have a great time. You know, you could hit mm-hmm. up Oliver. He's there. Yes, I know the best one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually, I actually do want to go with Oliver out there <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it'd be fun. Yeah, it'll be. Uh, we've been, it's been fun to like I'm talking to Oliver a lot, and it's been fun to kind of reconnect. Mm-hmm. We're, we're working on something really cool with the push with Oliver too here. You know, we'll see. Oh, yeah! Wow, so, you know, come to come to push boot in the uh, World Cup. You'll, you'll see something. Yeah. Oh, dude! Major might news be, drop. Yeah, might be something something cool you want to see all you know right yeah sounds sweet go. push booth at world cup some uh, some uh oliver lang stuff nice dude. well not oliver lang stuff but oh okay like something huh. related you know interesting 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious. I guess real quick while, while we're on the subject of push, we do have a, another question from the Discord mm-hmm. from CB2K, one of the goats. How did push goggles and push paintball get incepted, founded, and what's the long-term plans for push as a paintball brand and possibly outdoor life? Are you guys considering snowboard or skiing products, kind of like what Dye did? Uh, well, Push got founded by Brian Benini. Uh, so people who don't know who Brian is, Brian is pretty much responsible of how paintball looks in the modern era. So mm-hmm. Brian was the, the main designer for Dye for a long time. And it kind of when paintball evolved, that everything you kind of saw Brian had a lot of his hand in it, you know? So then uh, Brian left from die and worked a couple of years around and then he wanted to start a company. And, you know, Brian directed the movie with Pat, uh, Push, and they were thinking about the name and, you know, how should we start this? And that's where the Push started. And one of the main, the, the products that he really wanted to do was a goggle. So um, do, do we see Push go into the other directions? I don't know, maybe, you know, I don't, I don't think... I think it would be, I, I personally like the, the core is paintball, you know, that's, that's what we're good mm-hmm. at. But if there's opportunity, I don't know, that's up to, up to, you know, the Brian to see where it goes, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm down, whatever, you know? Yeah, of course. Brian, Brian Benini is an absolute legend. I actually can't believe we haven't had him on the show yet. That's, that's you a should. must. That is a must because Brian's one of the first people that I, this was even before Billy wing, actually, you know, I was like 13 years old and um, I would go to die. Dave would bring me into the R and D room. Brian would be in his office, head designer. And that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to school for graphic design and be a designer mm-hmm. at die. That's I had my heart set on it. I thought for sure that that was going to be my career. You know, I'm, I was a kid, so a lot has changed since then, but I remember they would give me these pieces of papers with a uh, little like shirt templates. And I would draw and like, try to, you know, make up shirt designs and they were probably all he really just made silly. you happy 100 <laughs> percent. yeah none of Give them marcel ever, the papers them, he's fine <laughs> none of them none of them ever got used or you know maybe even close but i remember that that was such a uh, a goal of mine to be in his position because he did he absolutely was responsible for the way paintball looked in that era and a lot of the innovation at die and um yeah so it's it's cool i'm always excited to see what you guys are working on and what you guys have coming next Yep. Yep. So anyways, but, um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have some, uh, some new stuff in the world cup. Dude, drop, let us know what it is, Miko. Nah, come on. Nope. Let the, let PTGB nope. come nope. on. Dude. Nope. Just come to the booth. You'll, you'll have <sighs> cups, a couple of things to things Whatever. to look at there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. Cool. Cool. Um, and you'll be rolling out there Friday. You said, right? Yeah. I'm leaving uh Friday morning, bright and early on a mission. <laughs> yeah I've, I've done it this is the third time now so it's not it, it's not that bad it's like three yeah. days of driving you know like i said I, I got we want to do a couple of stops so it won't be that that bad yeah i uh when i was like 21 or 22 i drove with the whole hostile kids army in, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah from from florida to california all across the bottom of the country and it was one of the best times ever <laughs> Yeah, That's no, I'm, shit for sure. I, 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 I like road trips. I'm personally, I'm like, I like this year, I went to visit Paxson. I, I yeah. did it last year. I, I just drove to Montana from San Diego. No, no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it doesn't bother me. It's fun. I like driving too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's not bad. Definitely. Not I like, bad. I like, I like to listen to music and kind of like concentrate my thoughts. I come up with a lot of my good ideas, creative wise, when I'm in a car, like actually like mm-hmm. every day. That's mm-hmm. like the, the quiet time, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. What's no, Miko's I'm... next passion project? Is it the, the paintball nerd? Is that? Uh, well, that's, that's the, I'm part of it. It's what Sysek, but um, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm, you never know, you know? Yeah. Tight lips over here, Miko. Yeah, Jeez. I know. I can't tell. I can't give all Jeez. the information out, you know? <laughs> but um, I, I really, I've been really liking it to like a lot of the, the photography and video work last five six years so we'll see what that takes me and then maybe maybe product wise something <laughs> yeah so can we dive in a little bit to what you'll be doing exactly for go sports at cup you kind of touched on it in the beginning i go sports i do um i handle all the social media uh so and so i don't i'm not involved so much in a direct show 
but I'm trying to show like last event, I was trying to show what's happening behind the, behind the scenes. Like if you follow the Instagram, you'll see the, a lot of the stories and trying to capture like some of the additional content. Uh, we are working on getting some like cool uh, highlight stuff uh, kind of captured differently from World Cup. Maybe some like, we might bring a couple of red cameras out there and like do like some like really, really neat like paintball footage and, and hopefully we'll get some of that out, like some of the footage out really quickly. Um, and also just nice. kind of like gonna like show what's up with the pits and everywhere else. And then I wanna make sure that, uh, like I said, we're, so if anybody's interested of advertising or sponsoring the webcast, uh, you can contact me. Uh, uh, it's Miko at GoSports.com. Uh, and I kind of want to bring the structure again that there is a good platform industry to support um, the show, you know, that make sure that people, like we get a variety of companies involved, get ads running, um, you know, just try totally. to call the show, you know, so that's, 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 my, that's my role with the, with the company. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Good, much needed. You know, having somebody like you that can just focus on on those tasks, I think will go a long way. It also helps that I've been around a long time and I do that some people respect me, you know, and I know a lot of people. So for sure. It's 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 a sometimes it's hard for people to just jump in there because this industry is very small and people know mm -hmm. each other a long time. So mm -hmm. definitely helps. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of that, you worked for Dive for quite some time, right? Um yep. What was it like working for one of the biggest paintball companies in the world? So if I have to sum it up, um, if you think like you could go to best university of paintball mm -hmm. business, that's what I had a chance to be part of, you know? So I, I started at Dai the helping, helping out with the tournaments as like a marketing person. And I left Dai, I was a vice president of the company. So, so there was, so I got to do pretty much everything between, but, uh, that was good for me. I had some of the best times in my life, you know, it, it was mm -hmm. epic in the times, but you know, everything changes and time goes on. So at one mm -hmm. point it was time to, time to move on a different, different adventures, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was incredible. Like, and going back to like my passion of doing film and, you know, uh, photos and, kind of creating stuff i got to work with some really really amazing people like I, I was working with another person i want to bring up like people don't know there's this guy called luis salcedo luis and, dude, and, uh, luis, luis was um, um i feel also a big reason why die became who die was because so luis, luis was a photographer like art art center graduate like amazing photographer from jt and he came from like, he was hired from motocross and was responsible of how JT looked and became the number one company. And then I think the, one of the best moves Dave ever did with uh, Dave and uh, Brian, whoever made the decision is bring the Lewis on board. And when Dai came up with the new product, it also looked phenomenal. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I think it's kind of lost in that, in that kind of people don't realize that, but you can make cool stuff. But if you, if you don't represent it like, in, in, up to up the bar that everything else is like yeah, like it needs to be up the bar what nike looks like it needs to be up bar what oakley looks like the top companies and and die did a like next level job that anybody else ever done mm. in the paintball and uh, luis was uh, definitely a big part of it because he, he is so good and i got to work with him like in all these projects and times and like learn from like literally a master of of a craft of how the how the do lightning and how to shoot things and do stuff like that. So, and then the business side, with working with everybody in their day, from Dave to Brian to um, uh, Josh Durbin was big, you know, owner of Carbon. He was my roommate for five years. Like he was just a kid like me. So like he went through the same school. So like, but, but like me and him would work together and go to Asia for like two months. And like, they're like, hey, hey guys, you got to develop this casual line or like this gear line. And, and that was, uh, that was just unbelievable, you know? I, oh, I yeah. got to switch battery on my headphones. It's just died. No worries. Sorry. Yeah, I can only imagine how much fun that would be um, getting to travel and do what you love. I can't hear I, you. He's, he's gone mute. <laughs> <laughs> um, that'd be amazing, man, just being able to travel and, and see the world and, uh, and create amazing lines. And I think HK Army obviously has done Sorry, probably the best. Oh, don't worry about it. 
we're just we're just yammering over here um hk has done the best job of doing what he's talking about you know making badass products and then taking that videography to the next level and making it appealing to the eye where as soon as you see the video you want to nab it up you want to buy it you want to rock it hk so absolutely crushes it in that space now with yeah. with videography um yeah you know and, and all the way from from when they had cassidy yep that's right yeah they've always just been super dominant and that's what it takes that's what right, it takes back. To do. he's back there we go yeah we got, got him, him. Yeah, the battery ran out of my headphones <laughs> no, no. no worries <laughs> we we're just talking about how uh, HK Army has also done a really good job with the video aspect of making making great products, and then you know making sure that when it hits the eyeball, people want to get it. You know, one hundred percent. And they they they've been doing excellent job to create their own style too. You know, they mm -hmm. didn't they didn't follow the footsteps of like the polished nice dialogue. They went with the HK way and kind of created the the uh -huh. you know whole vibe. And I, I, I like it's been really really awesome to see those guys yeah getting where they where they at right now like they're still yeah. really good friends of mine you know like so we mm -hmm. talk a lot and it's it's incredible like it is crushing it, you know yeah yeah it is truly incredible what they're what they're accomplishing these days super proud of them but yeah going back to die so die die was like just great great times for me you know and then yeah. just being able to be in part of that time like there's a there's a long period of time i was running all the events so like the big world cups we did we had a we had like a 55 i had a 55 employees in one event and and we had like three semi trucks you know massive tent setups and like the organization that just like designing the whole show was like like you don't get to do that you know that's like like you just don't have a chance to do that you know so as a, be able to do that and then like apply those skills to other things has been incredible you know mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I can imagine in those positions, you've picked up a ton of skills. And um, I mean, I remember going in and, and doing photo shoots with Luis, an absolute master. I, I uh, He brought uh, an image, which is what you're referring to, that became dye. And when you saw a dye ad, if it didn't have any logos, if you just saw a picture of, of some product that was brand new, you'd never seen it before, but you just saw how it was shot, you knew it was a dye product, you know? And that was... For like 10 years at least yeah, I mean, to this day you know still like you know when it's when it's a dye product and so for branding that's that's huge you know that's a a, a really valuable thing mm -hmm. and that's really the combination of of dave you know brian and the people who work there there's there's a lot of great people who work at dye um and and, and i i don't think people realize that like if you think mm -hmm. about nowadays like look 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 carbon where did every single person from carbon who matters Work, worked for <laughs> die you know mm -hmm. look push everybody worked for die you know so there's a lot of eggy makes probably the majority of the paintball gear in the world yeah he's, he's from die you know like, it's funny well, so many people don't know who eggy is no but well, <laughs> if you you know if you see eggy you know who he is you know <laughs> yeah but um <clears throat> um yeah he's one of the master minds of paintball like like literally oh, has nice. shaped the paintball where it's at right now totally. so so eggy was the guy who he, he's from finland too so eggy was the guy who developed the eyes in the angel that's the first, right that's the first mm -hmm. thing so yeah and then like suddenly like dynasty would have him and the avalanche would have him like and and then eggy developed the electronics and eyes for uh nyx matrix that changed guns, like absolutely changed everything. Like, I, I don't remember if you guys remember the videos that came out, they were just shooting like 30 balls per second. Just yeah. Like, <laughs> like insane, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Dave made a great move with the, uh, there and hired Eggy to do a work a die. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's all about the team. You, you know, yeah. um, all these great companies around the world, they have the best team. They have the best teammates, you know, and, yeah. and they, they really apply themselves. Um, we do have another question mm -hmm. from PTG World, the Discord chat. Um, CM Harry was wondering, um, you had a PM8 that was amazing that came out, and it was the Miko PM8. Mm -hmm. Where did you come up with that idea, and why did you or Dai not do anything like that again? Well, um, so there was a new protocon coming out, and 
All right. So I believe still that to date, that might have been the best gun I ever made. <laughs> because, because it was smaller than uh, the DM was. And, uh-huh. and Billy, Billy Wing did some magic. So he actually like fitted the DM bolt system into, the, into my gun. Oh, so, wow. But it was way smaller and had way better like ergonomics than the DM was. And, it, and they were all handmade, like hand polished. Like they were like Formula One cars. Hmm. So, uh, so anyway, so they needed somebody to be a face for the, for the proto gun, because it was, you know, it was a great gun, but like every, all the pros were shooting the DM guns. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And, uh, so that's, that's how it, that happened. But mm-hmm. uh, th- those guns, you know, it's funny. People hit me up all the time about those guns and they still are like, they're like, dude, I still shooting it. Yeah. <laughs> still using the gun. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, they're, they're insane. Like, because if you think like you buy a mass-produced gun, you know, you, they're, they're being made by some people, you know, these guys, guns were like, every single gun was like hand-tuned to the, to the best. You know, oh, that's really like, interesting. They had all the, like, even the, the cosmetics were like, like, I would like hand-polish all the bodies and like, even the DMs later on when I came on, the Marcelo remembers those ones probably because like, mm-hmm. obviously we had the access to use all the st- cool stuff at that. Mm-hmm. So we would like hand-polish the the bodies like tape them up then beat blast them get them anodized and they they turned out really cool like and and one of the cool things about that pm gun was like i, I just started working with uh tadao boards yeah oh, yeah those guys right. the, those guys were really cool so they they made the the miko board for it and and, mm-hmm. and i don't that that's still today my favorite gun like that gun was amazing yeah, I remember Tadao. Uh, Bob yeah. Bob Long had Tadao boards at him as well. At what yeah, point? I'm sure he did. I'm sure yeah. he did. <laughs> Bobby Bobby wasn't playing games. Um, no, no. And this uh, this kind of leads into a question like your favorite gear of all time, head to toe. Obviously, we know what the gun is, but what what's like your favorite gear of all time from from any time period? Um, when I was playing for Ironman, for for sure. I don't know. Like I obviously the push goggle right now it's like that's yeah the my favorite goggle um i use like a variation of gear um i use hk stuff i like hk stuff i use carbon stuff um mm-hmm. for gear i use infamous stuff um mm-hmm. depends kind of like where i'm playing and who i'm playing with um and the, the guns for sure back in the days it was the it was the bma nowadays i'm like i just said i shot the new field one gun mm-hmm. the the couple of weeks ago at the big game and i really liked it i think it was shooting amazing mm-hmm. and then uh, but before that i've been using uh, the eclipse cs2 mm-hmm. um i'm not the most gear savvy guy so like i kind of like to use what works but i like even with the iron man like we were lucky to um uh <laughs> be with the guys like billy wing so you were basically like like it, it doesn't suit good billy make it suit good yeah <laughs> you know and then he just had the gun and they, they would find it like amazing yeah He's so, a he's a master when it comes he, to he is the master. Yeah, <laughs> it's all because he wears the visor, dude. You know? <laughs> yeah. And why do you think Blake Yarbrough wears the visor? Yeah, it, it holds <laughs> yeah. the powers. It, cut, <laughs> it, it cuts through the wind like a razor blade, dude. <laughs> I think the drop forward had something to do with it too. That Billy rocked. Hundred percent. It was it was the visor drop combo. I don't think you could just have one. But telling tell, talking about the guy who had like ultimate heart, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Like you being a pro player, like I never forget like us going to first World Cup finals and Billy wasn't feeling hundred percent. He decided to sit sit himself out of the game from final game. Like, would you do that? Would you I do that? No fucking way. Like I would I would be like, I would just suffer and play. He was like, My knee is not good. I don't play the best game. I think I'm better off on the sidelines and coaching. You know, mm-hmm. that's like that's like mm-hmm. ultimate, like you just want the team to win. And, mm-hmm. and, and he was playing amazing up till to the point, you know, that's just something that I never forget. And also um, just like uh, the commitment he had always game. He's not the easiest person to come around sometimes, you know, <laughs> I get really angry at people. <laughs> so but, you remember but, how mad he got when we were in Texas? Oh my for God. Practice? I was <laughs> just talking about that with Paxson. <laughs> That was I still hilarious. feel sorry for X Factor guys. I know <laughs> he came in so hot, we, so uh, hot. We were, it was, it was. Uh, I don't know. I think Baxson threw a beer can at you, and like yeah. I watched, like you, like <laughs> yapping your mouth, 
and and it went like shoom through the wall and i'm like whoa he's like back like shut the fuck up marcelo and then like scott and like friend were wrestling and somebody threw him through the class table and i'm like oh should we like destroyed this house like completely and billy just shows up in the doors i screaming to everybody it's like you fucking guys have you gotta be in practice tomorrow and I'm like, <laughs> keep in mind i remember you guys because i was 16 years old maybe 17 at this point pretty sure i was 16 yeah and we fly to Texas for one of the layout weekend practices before a major event. And you guys said to, to us as kids, you guys <laughs> have to learn how to play hungover. You have to be able to See? fight through this. If you can't, then you don't have heart. <laughs> We're like, okay, let's go out. And I used your passport that night at the bar to get That's in. true. <laughs> I was like, oh, you look like me. Come on, let's go. <laughs> That's insane. That's such a funny story. The passport story. I still tell oh, yeah. that story to this day. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, it's, it's uh, true though. But August eighth. Of- what's your birthday? August eighth, I think. Uh, I was eighteen. August, August eighteenth. Yeah. August eighteenth. So, yeah. <laughs> but but, but isn't it true though? Like you play a little bit of Hangover, you play really good. <laughs> there, I don't know. If, I don't. I don't know if it's no, no. Play so really if you, good, if, but if it's you, like, but if you know how to play Hangover, yes. it's like you perform. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. So uh, you should probably not tell this story, but there's actually a kind Uh-oh. of funny thing. So there was a thing in the Iron Man that. If I didn't have a one drink before the final, we never won. <laughs> so, so there is always like Paxson or like no, nobody knew. I'm t- twenty years later. I'm telling you now. So, okay. so like finally Ryan, we get some Ryan, juice. Ryan Williams or like Paxson or somebody would be making sure he would come to the pit and have like Captain and Coke, and it was like, okay, you gotta drink that drink, otherwise we're not gonna win. So <laughs> I remember the one final I went, I was like, I'm kind of drunk. I'm walking in there, you know? And I'm like, dude, how much booze you put in that drink? He's like, oh, I put a, I put a good amount, you know? <laughs> so, but anyway, so that Ryan was And Williams was insane, how he could just drink so beers in good. between every game, and he was oh, so he would be, good. He would be like blacked out shit face by the end crazy. of the finals and just shoot everybody, <laughs> yeah, you know? It was crazy. But talking about the like, guy who was incredible what he did, he would always find a way to get up in the center. Yeah. And he would never miss that shot, you know? Yeah, he would right. never miss the guy crossing. He would be just quiet, sitting there, not shooting yes. his gun. Guy yeah. would come, he's like, pop, pop. That's it, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Laser focus, yeah. 100%. Great, great player. Mm-hmm. It's weird. You got to think, the game has evolved so much because you don't see that anymore. People, people are, are, you can't get away with, with drinking throughout the day and still performing. I don't know you what it is. Soft. You, you think you, that's what you think it is? So question, yeah. and I know I know what your answer is going to be. I know what your answer is going to be. Do you think a top team of today would beat the top team of 2007 if we were to play an X-Ball match? It'd be close, but I, I think I, I would put the 08 Ironman against anybody, that specific <laughs> team, 100%. Like, I know. I knew you would. I knew you would say that. I don't know. I, 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 I just feel like the, there's there's math behind it. The, the amount amount we practiced, amount we shot paintballs, and did a lot of the work. You guys do a lot of work individually, like and like you stay on top. Both of you stayed on top of your game, you know, and the physical performance and everything else. But I think that that time, like the, the teams were tougher. You know, I really think so. But it, it's hard to say, you know. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Oh, eight. That's kind of a tricky year okay. too, actually. Well, well, I think, let I me, think let, me ask like... let me let me ask this question. Do you think that? Um, so because the, the top teams are still kind of the same people. So do you, do you think twenty five <laughs> right, year right, right. twenty five year old Marcelo was better paintball player than thirty five year old Marcelo? How old are you now? Thirty one. Uh, thirty one. The twenty one year old Marcelo was better paintball player. Thirty. Uh, well, what do you think? No, like, like, I don't. well, the, the spot you play, you know? No, I don't. I don't at all. Okay. Not even close. I, I think I would crush the twenty one year old me. Yeah. Well, let's we'll see. Go, <laughs> no, Willie. We're gonna see if we have a time machine. We can we're yeah, working on it. <laughs> yeah, working on it. We're working on this time. But it, it's it's yeah. interesting to say, like, it, it, yeah. and also the game has and changed. It, I feel like it changes all the time. So totally. Mm-hmm. It's what it's a conversation in all sports, right? You yeah. hear like the OG basketball players are like, oh, they can never well, last in our let's, era. Let's let's put it you this know? way: as soon as soon as you retire, it doesn't matter who you are, you're done. Like people don't want to think that how it is, but Lee, even like Oliver Lang, you know, like one of the biggest names ever, when he retired, like there is a lot of people who don't know who the Oliver is. Yeah, you know? you're right. So it's it's, it's the sad. same thing. Like you you play you watch football and and you retire some like best wide receiver retires, 
that you're you're done you're gone you know like there's some of the legends that you know people remember but it's like yeah it's hard to say yeah yeah life keeps going exactly so <laughs> that's so when people going back to that 10 man conversation when people think like you know that you can you're limiting players to play on a pro level that's mm-hmm. what i'm saying it's like i'm like the fact that you quit and didn't continue playing and you're not that good like if you want to play against the best then there is the best you know so, so is is that official like i don't know that, i just i just keep referring oh, to it <laughs> yeah is i i wonder uh i don't know the facts on if if that's the rules now moving forward or is that just something that they're talking about i don't know uh, either i'm not sure yeah but if yeah. they're still talking about it don't do it just make a different <laughs> division yeah because I, I really think the Tenman is doing a great thing right now. It's bringing a lot of the older players playing again. Uh-huh. And a lot of their kids are playing again. You know, like you see all these people that you used to, you know, see 25 years ago. It gives them another format to play and compete. And, and there's a lot of hype around it, I think. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you've been to those events, like in many ways, they're like. Um, I think those, I think they're the ones that don't want the pros there though i i think they're the ones yes i i I know but like that's a that's a wrong decision though like they yeah they just need to uh they just need to uh figure out um maybe a different division or something i don't know but it's a it's a wrong answer like like hey we we gone on this road before in paintball how did that work out with the nxl and the npbl when Mm -hmm. people when players were not allowed to play another format and Teams were not to play another thing, but one league of, and you know, it, it, it's, it never ended up good. It's a bummer. Like the NXL Europe too, right now, you can only have one U S pro on your roster. That kind yeah, of stuff. And, 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 and okay. So when I was a kid and we played the millenniums, like before I start playing pro, like that was like the coolest experience was to play against like, we, we played like Ironman, you know, mm-hmm. or we played because at the time you divisions were still mixing up and you played a one pro team. Uh, when you played seven men and and it was so sick to see like the top players to come play and be in the same tournament and do that stuff like i i don't think that's a right move like if if your team can and there's teams that have proven that they can be that good like joy division like they 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 were not crazy funded team joy division joy division didn't have money but they worked hard and they became a top team you know yeah so it's possible if you want it mm-hmm. it really is and they were not good when they started first, but they worked super hard and they became a top team. Like they won in events in the US, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so if you're not ready to like, if you don't want to play in the, if you want to play in the highest level, you want to play the best people. How are you going to get better? Absolutely. Yeah, it's good. It's good for the game. We just need, yeah. you know, we need more paintball. We don't want to be cutting, cutting things down or watering things down. Let's, let's right. have people playing paintball, you know? 100%, 100%. Yeah. Um, what jersey number did you rock throughout your paintball career? Uh, I had a couple, but the most of the time was number eight. Uh-huh. And it's a number of uh, uh, Demus Elane, which is my one of my biggest sports heroes from uh, Ducks, Anaheim Ducks. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to play with that number eight. So that's the reason nice. I played Dude, that's awesome. Love that. Yep. Super cool. Yeah. And Miko, I guess, you know, I just have one more question for you. Uh, you know, for the young up and coming players, you know, you, you kind of mentioned you, you don't see many of them and maybe there's a reason, what kind of advice do you have for them? How can they, you know, do a better job of getting noticed and do a better job of, of making their way to the pro ranks? Well, I, I would say that first of all, you gotta like put your time and effort in, like, don't give up. Like, that's the biggest thing I see. I see a lot of kids like being like, Hey, I'm really into this thing. Throughout my career, I saw so many players almost getting good and then like kind of fading away yeah like True. like it's gonna take work you know it's gonna be there's gonna be hurdles that you have to come over it's gonna be frustrating but just keep playing and and mm-hmm. eventually like if you really want it that hard it's gonna it's gonna be there and and to be noticed um paintball is a team sport you you gotta like put yourself out there like one thing i feel like I didn't, I didn't consider myself very cocky in any time as a player, but I was like, I made sure that I, you know, voiced my opinion and also like put myself in a position that I had to perform. Mm-hmm. 
and that's that's sometimes the same thing like put me in like I'm, I'm gonna play this but then you gotta then you gotta perform you know totally but you're gonna lose and you're gonna lose a lot of games you're gonna have a lot of problems like like you know you know you you just oh, yeah. broke your knee a couple of times you know like totally. there's there's all these different things and then um if you just keep going like amount more work you put in better you're gonna be yeah so I just got to say a major shout out to Miko for this being his very first Zoom ever. This is his That's first true. Zoom. What? Uh, yeah. I never, I never even like had Zoom in my computer before. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's big news. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out. Shout yeah, out to the like YouTube. Doing the whole thing, like putting in my computer earlier. <laughs> nice. <laughs> shout out to the YouTube. You can check out. Miko's got some fishing poles. He's about to go catch some big oh, yeah. fish out here. And then uh, I do have a question. We have the iconic question, actually. Um, oh, yes, we do. Every That's show, right. every show we have the, the iconic question from iconic paintball. And, um, the question is Miko, you have managed some of the largest brands in paintball over the years and developed numerous market leading products at companies like die and recoil. What sort of experiences on and off the paintball field have helped prepare you for your roles behind these companies? I think it's been the learning from like really good people, how to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of like believing what you're doing, you know, it's, it goes same to like, we were just talking about in paintball, you know, like you got to put the work in that's, that's, that matters. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. But yeah, definitely. I know uh, there's a one great advice when, if you're a young kid, even the paintball team or like in a new company, learn how to shut up and listen, you know, like yes. sometimes sometimes like you don't need to open your mouth so that's 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 a, that's, a, that's i guess my advice yeah you got two ears you know yeah. two ears one mouth double up the listening and cut the talking in half and i, I think things go typically go a little bit better 100 percent, 100 percent. it's great advice yeah it is man <clears throat> so well, all right, Miko, man, I know uh, you got a lot to still get done heading into World Cup. I know Tyler and I have been on the heavy grind. Um, as we get into World Cup, I guess I do have one more question just off the top of my head before we let you go. What was your favorite World Cup win? Was it 07 or 08? It was uh, 08 because uh, my, uh, my, my parents have never seen me play paintball. So my, my family flew in Orlando. Oh wow! What's the what's the that's the only tournament they ever been ever watched, oh and we won a World Cup. So yeah. that was my favorite. Plus, oh, plus, plus, I probably played the best, played the best paintball in my life because you played I, so good that I, I and I played every point in the finals. Mm -hmm. So that was like I couldn't miss anybody. It was like one of those moments that I was like, "Well, this is never gonna happen again." <laughs> you shot someone off the break. It must have been that PM eight. Uh, maybe, maybe <laughs> that was the year. <laughs> that was the year. Yeah, no, year. dude. I remember you were you were on fire. You you could not miss anybody. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah, World Cup is special, man. Oh, for sure. That's that's yeah. all that matters. Mm -hmm. And thank you for everything that you do in paintball to this day. Everybody, go uh, check out paintballnerd.com. Is that correct? Yep, that's yep. it. Paintball nerd, and uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Safe travels on your epic journey across the country over to World Cup, and we look forward to seeing you out there. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Awesome, All brother. Right, brother. Thank you, Miko. Thanks, bro. Peace. I'll see you Peace. There. Bye. All right, PTG fam. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out with us. We are heading to World Cup, so we will not have a show for you guys next week. I do apologize, but as soon as we get back, we will be bringing all of the action. We've been so busy trying to prepare for World Cup. I know you guys can understand. I'm sure a lot of you are doing the same. Hope your grind is going very well. If you guys would like to join us on this journey, you can become part of the Discord. Uh, sign up from our Patreon. You can find that on ptgpaintball.com. Website is brought to you by Rusty Glaze at Constant Pursuit. If you guys need a website done, you know where to go. And if you guys have waited until this part of the show, this long, and you're watching the YouTube, I'm gonna let you guys in on a little World Cup secret as I just took my hat off. Oh yeah, it's, it's happening. It's going down like that. All right, PTG fam. Love you guys so much. Guys, gals, everyone out there. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you very soon.